In this video, I will demonstrate and explain how to convert an MP2600 IAC dual feedback application over to the Sigma 7 SIAC. Hi, I am Micah Studeman. Here is a quick preview. Yaskawa offers two solutions for single axis motion control with IAC 61131-3 programming. The MP2600 IAC option card and the Sigma 7 SIAC. The MP2600 IAC has built-in support for an external encoder. The Sigma 7 SIAC supports an external encoder, one required by the application, by adding an option card. More information on external encoder support on the Sigma 7 SIAC can be found in the following video that is available on Yaskawa's website or on YouTube. There are four steps to convert from the MP2600 IAC to the Sigma 7 SIAC. Step 1. The I.O. wiring needs to be adjusted. Step 2. Hardware configuration needs to be modified for the Sigma 7 SIAC. Step 3. The encoder manufacturing file needs to be loaded into the feedback option card. And Step 4. The Motionworks IC project code needs to be modified for I.O. differences. Now let's look at this in a little more detail. The Sigma 7 amplifier lineup has two controller options available. The MP2600 IEC is a Sigma 7S option style amplifier with a controller option card mounted to the side. The Sigma 7S IEC is a Sigma 7S amplifier with modified hardware to support a built in motion controller. Differences in I.O. exist between the two controllers as well. The MP2600 IAC option card comes with its own I.O. separate from the Sigma 7 SIAC option amplifiers. The Sigma 7 SIAC only has the I.O. available on the Sigma 7 amplifier. External encoders are available on both controllers. The MP2600 IAC has one built into the controller option card. This input only works with TTL encoders. The Sigma 7 SIAC needs an option card to have an external encoder input. Three cards are available for different types of encoders. External encoders are needed for dual feedback applications. Using a dual feedback example, I will show what is required to convert from an MP2600 IAC to a Sigma 7S IC controller. The dual feedback example application I am using is a rotary knife. Here is a demo that is used to simulate the operation. When the belt moves, the rotary disc with the black triangle rotates and tracks the pieces of tape that go by on the belt. The black triangle simulates a knife blade cutting product being delivered by a belt. As you can see, the pieces of tape on the belt are not equally spaced. A product sensor is needed to detect the tape on the belt. The belt is being moved by an induction motor connected to one of the pulleys. Attached to the induction motor is a TTL encoder which relays position information back to the controller. The white circular wheel with the black triangle is controlled by a Yaskawa servo motor, which is connected to the MP2600 IEC controller. When the sensor reads the tape marks, the controller stores the belt position from the encoder so that the knife can cut on the tape. Now I am going to go through converting the rotary knife demo from using the MP2600 IEC on the upper left to the Sigma 7 S IEC that is in the upper right. So what needs to be done to change out the MP2600 IEC with the Sigma 7 S IEC? There are four major steps that need to be done to complete this conversion. Step one is to adjust the wiring to the controllers. Step two is to modify the hardware configuration. Step 3 is to load the encoder manufacturing file into the feedback option card. Step 4 is to adjust the project code. These steps can be done in any order as long as PN00E.3 is set in hardware configuration before the encoder manufacturing file is loaded. Let's start with step 1 by looking at the wiring changes that need to be done. Currently all of the wiring is coming into the MP2600 IEC. The Sigma 7 SIC has the same voltage requirements, so the power, motor, encoder, ethernet, and safety connectors can be directly moved over. If any I.O. was coming into the Sigma 7 amplifier, it could also be moved over directly to the Sigma 7 SIC. 
The I.O. and external encoder connections on the MP2600 IEC cannot be directly moved over to the Sigma 7S IEC. The encoder wiring needs to go into the feedback option card. The feedback option card provides 5 volts for encoder power, so an external encoder power supply is not required. Any digital inputs and outputs, along with the encoder latch input, needs to be moved over to the Sigma 7 I.O. on the Sigma 7 SIAC. The Sigma 7 SIAC only supports 7 digital inputs and 3 digital outputs. Three of the digital inputs can be used for high speed latch inputs. The MP2600 IEC controller supports 8 digital inputs, 8 digital outputs, 1 analog input, 1 analog output, and a Z phase latch input. The Z phase latch input and 1 digital input can be used as a high speed latch. The Sigma 7 SIEC cannot support all of the MP2600 IEC I.O., especially the analog I.O. So, if more I.O. is required, external I.O. like Yaskawa Slice I.O. can be used. Now for step 2. Let's see what needs to be done in hardware configuration. I currently have a restricted version of the MP2600 IEC hardware configuration on the left side, and the same project that is not restricted on the right side. The current resource in this configuration is the MP2600 IEC. I'm going to change the resource from MP2600 IEC to the Sigma 7S IEC. To enable the external encoder, I need to go into the knife axis and go to all parameters, and then find parameter PN00E.3. This parameter can only be set within hardware configuration, and it is not available in Sigma 1 Plus version 7. Positive motion of the motor is counterclockwise when looking from the front of the motor. So out of the two selections, I'm going to select 1, External encoder moves in forward direction for counterclockwise motor rotation. Axis 21 is now available under the knife axis in the hardware window. At this point I can do a quick offline save. And now Axis 21 needs to be set to the same name that's used inside the MP2600 IEC project, which is Conveyor. Also looking at the MP2600 IEC project, we need to also set the encoder resolution to 4096. And I also need to set the feed constant, 7.853981634. And I have to set the user units to inches. I can save the offline configuration, and then I will go online. And I want to choose the offline configuration. I can verify that all the information is still set. Then I'm going to do an online save to save it to the controller and a reboot. When the controller turns back on, a A.CF1 alarm will appear. Basically, that means that there is no encoder file loaded on the feedback option card. Now for step three, let's load the encoder manufacturing file. The encoder manufacturing file can be created by contacting your local RME or your SCAR representative. A file needs to be created for each encoder being used. I'm going to open Sigma 1 Plus and connect to the servo pack. I'm going to use the USB connection. When connected, I can still see that it has an A.CF1 alarm, so I need to go to the main menu. And under the encoder settings section, I'm going to go to motor parameter scale right. Using this function, I'm going to go and find my file, IQCoder Encoder 260.mgf. Then I'm going to go to the next screen to write this file to the feedback option card. Once the file is written, I'm going to disconnect from the amplifier. And then I'm going to power cycle the system. After the reboot, there should be no alarms on the amplifier. Now for the final step, step 4. Let's see what changes need to be done in the Moshworks IC project code. The product sensor was being read through the high speed latch input external C channel on the MP2600 IEC option card. 
When I moved the wiring over to the Sigma 7 SIC I.O., I connected the sensor signal to the EXT1 latch input. Going into the buffer POU, the product buffer function block uses the touch probe function block internally to capture the tape positions on the belt. The trigger ref input and the registration data needs to be adjusted to use the EXT1 input. Looking at the touch probe help, I need to set the bit element of the trigger ref structure to 1 to use the EXT1 input. That element is initialized in the initialized buffer worksheet. So I need to change this from 0 to 1. Other MP2600 IAC IO is referenced in the RKIO POU under the logic worksheet. So in here, wherever you see an MO1 DI or MO1 DO, that is the MP2600 IAC variables. These IO variables need to be modified according to how they were wired to the Sigma 7 SIAC. Looking in this list, I can see that. I'm using the analog input and the analog output from the MP2600 IAC. So the Sigma 7 SIC does not support analog outputs. So an Ethernet IP SLEO device will need to be used with one analog input slice, an analog output slice, a digital input slice, and a digital output slice. The MP2600 IAC IO variables can be changed by using the global find replace. One thing to be aware of is that the MP2600 IAC analog I.O. is handled as an L real value, where the SLEO analog I.O. is handled as an integer. So going back into RKIO, conversion blocks need to be added for the analog input and output signal. Now that the project I.O. is converted, I can do a make and I can download the project. Running the program, you can see that the knife cuts the product at the tape marks on the demo using the Sigma 7 SIC controller, which is on the top right. So why should I consider the Sigma 7 SIC over the MP2600 IAC? Because the Sigma 7 SIC requires the use of an option card for the external encoder, different encoders can be used instead of just a TTL encoder. The Type 1 feedback option card supports sine cosine, hyperface, and end data encoders. The full closed loop option card supports encoders that use the Yaskawa serial protocol. The feedback and full closed loop option cards are a lower cost option when compared to the MP2600 IAC card, so there is a cost benefit there as well. The feedback and full closed loop option cards provide power for the encoder, so no external power supply is required. These dual feedback applications can also be converted to run on 400 volt systems because the MP2600 IAC option card is not available for Sigma 7 400 volt server amplifiers. Thanks for watching this video. For more information, visit yaskawa.com.